summer of 2007, Jerry Martin, director of the Holmes Museum of Anthropology in Troy Belfort, a graduate student of anthropology at Wichita State University, traveled to the Osmot area of New Guinea in order to make several short films about the Osmot and their culture. While they were there, they contacted an Osmot man named Robertus about filming the carving of an Osmot drum. Robertus, or Robbie as many call him, is a Wowie Bits, the Osmot term for a master carver. He has made many carvings for the annual art auction in August. This auction brings many tourists from the United States, Europe, and Australia. The carving of the drum took many days' work. Since we wanted to film the various processes involved in the carving, there was the additional problem of timing. We were traveling out to some of the smaller villages to film other things, so we had to shoot the sequence of how the drum was carved over a period of several weeks. Ravi showed us his drum. He carved it several years ago. Many Wawipits are also singers and drummers, so they make their own drums. This drum had motifs that represent snakes, fruit bats' feet, and bipani, large nose pieces that are made to resemble the tusks of the wild boar. It's the feet of a bat. Yes, yes. In the Osmot language, a drum is called a tifa. The local newspaper in Agats is called Osmot Tifa. Yes. The first step of carving the drum is to get the wood for it. The wood for the drum comes from a special tree called a jip. We had to travel to the village of Omor to get the wood. The wood was collected from the sago fields of a kinsman in Omor, requiring a small payment for the tree. We traveled by boat to where the tree was located. Robbie knew where there was a tree that would provide the wood for the drum because he had made another drum recently. Robbie's kinsmen started the cutting of the log, but Robbie finished it. Yeah. Yeah. As they cut the tree, large biting flies swarmed us. Robbie helped swat some of them <laughs> off me since I was filming. <laughs> <A line. laughs> We returned to Agats with the wood, where Robbie would do the carving. It is important that the log cut for the drum not fall in the river. If it or the tree falls in the river, there will be a strong wind and rain.
Robbie starts by cutting off some of the excess wood from the logs so it will be lighter and easier to handle. Robbie's house was by the Agats port. Agats is the largest village in the Osmot area and is the port where supplies are delivered. It is also where the main government offices are located. Most of the area's logging takes place here and at Robbie's house you could hear the sounds of the machinery almost constantly. You could also hear the stereos of the men who sell music cassettes and CDs at the nearby market. Like a spear, something like a spear, and it's made of uh, uh, they call nibo, nibo, nibo tree. He then hollows out the wood. He does not work alone. His family members work with him at various points. Robbie used a chisel to make a hole. After the holes at the end are as deep as they can go with the chisel, Robbie used a piece of ironwood to pound the hole. He then heated up a piece of iron to burn the hole deeper. Traditionally, the Asmat would burn out the wood in order to hollow the drum. Once the drum has been hollowed out, Robbie works on carving some of the designs. The handle is also carved. The specific designs that are made are decided by the carver who receives the inspiration for them from their own ancestors. <laughs> 